Hi everyone, Angus Campbell here. Monday the 16th of September. And uh, hopefully the, uh, we'll complete today the final piece in the barrels and pistons jigsaw in that we'll uh, fit the barrels and pistons hopefully successfully onto uh, the cases at the back there. Um, all I've had to do in the meantime since the last episode is uh, find some uh, sir clips, the correct sir clips for the gudgeon pins and uh, there they are and luckily I um, I had uh, a couple of pistons with the uh, some anti-rust paper uh, bundled in on the other side of the gudgeon pins and uh, luckily they contained some original sir clips. I do have some others as well with a, a pair of uh, boxed pistons still in the uh, original AE boxes uh, so I've got some spares too but we've got all the parts together uh, so the uh, the first thing that we'll do is um, fit the pistons onto the uh, the con rods and uh, the pistons at the moment are uh, still sat in there loosely in the barrels following the test fit uh, yesterday so we'll get those out and we'll fit those first and we'll take it from there So the uh, initial preparation has been done then, the, each of the pistons has got one circlet fitted with a good jump pin part inserted from the other side and uh, so we can now proceed and uh, fit the pistons onto uh, the con rods making sure we get these the correct way around i.e. the uh, bigger inlet valve recess at the rear and in fact um, there you go you can just see that these are marked front anyway but it's uh, it's fairly obvious one of the other things you might notice there is that just below the, uh, the part number is the letter M with an arrow and uh, I didn't appreciate that um, These uh, pistons can be marked up with either, I think it's S, S M, or uh, L markings, as pointed out by uh, a friend, which um, uh, indicates um, the uh, relative comparat comparative uh, size of the piston, and this might indicate why uh, we have a discrepancy in the size of these pistons so that one's marked up as M which I think stands for medium small medium large this one's got an L for uh, for large I think that's what uh, that stands for anyway and uh, if that's uh, incorrect and, I, and I'm quite correctly corrected so to speak then uh, I'll update you on a, a later video but I didn't appreciate that and uh, also, some pistons aren't marked at all, but uh, we've got a whole stack of uh, different pistons from different times anyway. And uh, I think, as I've said before, uh, with respect to uh, those engines and engine parts that are left, then uh, there are probably no two that are exactly the same if they're all from different periods with parts from different periods. And we've had to uh, actually do a bit of jigger, jiggery pokery on this motor during the build anyway because we found that the original barrels we were going to use weren't going to be compatible with these uh, these earlier cases. Uh, anyway, we'll get there and uh, let's proceed and get the pistons fitted. Okay, pistons uh, successfully fitted. Uh, not too difficult at all. Uh, so now we'll proceed and clean up and all up the inside of the bore. And then we'll gently uh, slide the barrels over the uh, rings. I don't have any ring compressors, but I've done this a couple of times already. There is a taper on the uh, bottom of these bores to uh, fac facilitate ring compression. Uh, so as long as we do this gently enough, um, we should be able to do this without, uh, without any damage and without any too much difficulty. So I'll prepare the barrels now and uh, we'll begin putting those on. So making good progress, one piston uh, done. You can just see the skirt there and uh, one more to go 
and I'll just be raising that uh, up a little but it's not in a bad position there to be honest it's quite uh, straightforward to, to get the rings in from that position the, bar uh, the barrel is sliding down well uh, so we'll crack on okay we have success um, just requires a lot of patience a lot of lubrication uh, to ensure that um, you gradually ease the rings through the taper without putting too much pressure on uh, because that introduces the risks of uh, breaking breaking a ring uh, but that's gone down really nicely it's very snug and there we are 180 degree one up one down and the uh, the pistons are very snug in there with no uh, lash at all so uh, very pleased with that so well, what we'll do now is um, move on to the next job just to finish off and that's the uh, timing cover here so we'll get the parts out and what we've got to do is insert the oil seal into the cover and also we can put together the oil pressure release valve plunger and spring 2 and uh, fit that onto this side and then we're just about done. So I'll bring you back in a sec. Right, I've got the uh, the parts together then for uh, the timing cover. Here's the cover itself, which fits on like so. And then to fit into this cover, We've got the oil seal, which goes in here for the end crank feed. We've got the circlip to hold the oil seal in. We've got the oil pressure release valve and its spring and its cap, which fits in here. And we've also got, if you can see it, a little tiny jet here, which is an Amel jet that fits screws in here and that's to uh, to spray oil onto the uh, the worm drive gears here for the pump so on the end of the crank here we've got a worm gear and that slots into a corresponding gear on the shaft of the oil pump which is here and you can just see that uh, that there and that's sprayed with oil uh, under uh, slight pressure via this jet. Now just to explain the the passage of oil then through through the timing cover. So the timing cover as I say fits like so roughly in that position go and if we take that off and lay it down in that position I'll show you then how how everything lines up now I did have somewhere here a pointer it's on the floor right here we go this is a better pointer So the oil pump here feeds oil out through this small hole here, it appears to be a small hole under pressure, in the timing cover, let's do it that way around, there we go, in the timing cover this hole lines up with that hole there. So oil is pressure fed into this timing cover and oil from that hole then traverses a channel that way, hence the reason for this blanking plug here. Oil traverses into here through a channel here and 
into this cavity here um, prior to which it's already fed this this small jet to spray oil onto the girt, onto the worm drive in this cavity here this is behind then the oil seal which sits in here because this cavity uh, within this cavity sits the end of the crank so from within this cavity it's pressure fed through the end of the crank here to feed uh, the crank bearings from the main cavity here we've got a channel that's cut to a small channel that's cut to uh, this spindle holder here this, and this is uh, the spindle holder for the cam chain sprocket spindle here so this turns and therefore this needs to this effectively this is a, a bearing face here that needs to be fed with oil that so that's fed from the pressure chamber um, and also on this side of it we've got another hole that's drilled into this cavity which is the oil pressure relief valve so if pressure gets too great in this in the main cavity then the oil pressure release plunger valve is then pushed out against its spring and if the pressure is too great what it does is it reveals a um, a channel when the piston is pushed out far enough that um, relieves the pressure by forcing the uh, oil out of this hole here which just goes into uh, if you like the other cavities within the timing cover which can then enable that excess oil then to to drain off into into the bottom of the crank so a very important uh, part of the engine in that uh, this regulates uh, and provides all the requisite uh, channels and feeds uh, for the uh, the main oil feed under under pressure from the pressure side of the pump so to build this up then we've got to install the uh, oil pressure relief valve plunger its spring and its cap which are those parts there which you can just see we've got the tiny uh, jet and we've got the uh, the oil seal and the circlip to hold the oil seal in because obviously the, uh, the back side of that oil seal is under a significant amount of pressure so we'll put the oil seal in first obviously spring side down actually what I'll do is I might have to give that um, give that a bit of lubricant to push that in there we don't want to uh, to damage the outer edge which acts as a, a seal in itself um, you'll see within within the uh, oil, oil seal holder there's, a, there's a, a groove cut for for the circlip and also there's a shelf on, on which the uh, seal sits as well so you can't push it too far in uh, but we've just got to be careful we don't uh, damage it on the way in just give that a bit of oil
Right, we'll just find something that allows us the right diameter to tap that in. Okay, there we go, it was a little stubborn going past the uh, the groove and we've taken off a little bit of swarf, but it's seated in there well now and it sits just below the, uh, the groove, the uh, circlet groove. So now we can use the uh, circlet pliers to insert that. And there we go. It's a good sized circlet that's nice and uh, nice and snug, but then it has to be. That's a very important seal. Okay, the next thing that we'll uh, put in before we lose it, and in fact um, I shouldn't really have uh, shouldn't have really been uh, tapping that seal vigorously while this jet was on the bench here because it is easy to lose. But this was kindly donated by uh, a friend again who's. Uh, in the throes of building fury and I'm told and I didn't realize this I'm told that this is a, a standard aim will jet need a better screwdriver than that There we go. Putting that, uh, putting that in carefully so we don't uh, damage the slot in case we have to remove it. Then finally, the uh, the oil pressure relief valve plunger and its spring. Again, we need to oil this up pretty well. Then it slides. And what we'll do is 
put a bit of oil in down the uh, relief overflow slot. Spinner. And there we are. That's that job done. So we'll now fit this tentatively. Because we uh, we don't want to damage that seal. There you are. So that cover's on. You can see uh, with this cover, this has obviously been used at some point for, um, I presume, um, an oil, um, oil pressure gauge, which is why we've got this blanking plug for this takeoff here. Um, the production boat motors never intended to have that. So what we'll do next is See if we've got some uh, screws in stock. They're going to need to be. Uh, Pretty short ones, and I don't think those are going to be short enough. Let's try one, but I don't think these are short enough, they might be too long. Better screwdriver than that. No, we're good. There we go. So that's the size. Sorry about the shake. That one's a little tight. Apologies, I knocked you again. And there we go. So that completes then the barrel and pistols, pistons and the timing cover. Um, and I'm probably for this motor gonna leave it at that for the time being and say that's the first major dirty fit probably completed. Um, and that's because there is some 
work to do on the head. But my intention is to, to now strip what we have here and begin the, the final clean build. But once we've got the minimal in place, such as the cases and the, uh, the crank and probably the oil pump, then we'll fit that into the uh, into the rolling chassis, and we'll continue the uh, the clean build uh, in the rolling chassis itself. And that's quite a big uh, big motivation, to be honest. So we'll leave it there for for now. Much more progress and uh, pleased with that. Thanks very much for watching everybody. Um, we'll probably take a bit of a break now from the E35 SS Fury and we'll begin the A70 uh, Lightning engine build while we're uh, stripping down the uh, Fury in parallel. Um, so next video we'll be back on uh, the Lightning. Anyway, I hope that's been uh, interesting. Um, thanks very much for watching, everyone, and uh, see you again soon. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.